Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Nazareth Presbyterian Church. I'm glad you've joined us today. Our sermon will be a little bit different. I realize how much I have been missing our children and our young people, and since Lent is such a somber time and the sermons have a rather serious flair, I felt like perhaps the past weeks have been sermons for the adults that the children and youth just eavesdropped on. So today's sermon will be especially for the children and youth, and I'll ask the adults to eavesdrop on that sermon. So I hope you'll join us. And now let us worship God. How glorious it is to hear of Jesus' resurrection. At his death, our hearts cried out, and we felt lost. But he comes to us and walks with us, even now. In the holy word, in the music, in the prayers, he is present with us. Lord, help us really be ready to receive you into our lives. Let us pray. Loving God, come and speak to our hearts today. May we, like those on the Emmaus Road, find your words burning with hope in our lives. Strengthen us and give us courage for the journey ahead. For we pray in Christ's name, who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 
If we say we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, then God, who is gracious and forgiving, will give us redemption. So pray with me now as I offer this prayer of confession. Lord, you are so patient with us. You brought us through Easter when we rejoiced at the news of the resurrection of your Son, our Savior. You were with us in the upper room when we remained hidden out of our fears. Now you come to us on the road. You come to us in our everyday lives, even when we are experiencing living in such a different way. But we aren't always ready for you and don't always see or feel your presence. We let so many things crowd in on our lives and these intrusions blot out our awareness of your presence. Forgive our blindness and our stubbornness. Help us keep our hearts open to you to see and tell the good things you have done in our lives. For we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Even though you have not seen Jesus, not one of you, you have assurance of his presence and his love with you. The promises of God are always true. God is with us in the resurrection of Jesus, in our journeys, and in our lives. Praise be to God. Amen.
Let us pray. Father, in these minutes I ask that you remove all thoughts from us except those that are yours so that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at verse 13. Hear the word of God. On that day, two of Jesus' disciples were walking to a village called Emmaus. Emmaus was about seven miles from Jerusalem. The two disciples were talking about everything that had happened. While they were talking, Jesus came up and began walking with them. But they did not recognize Jesus. What are you talking about, Jesus asked. The disciples stopped walking. They looked sad. One of the disciples said, Are you the only person in Jerusalem who doesn't know what happened these last few days? What happened, Jesus asked. The disciples told him about Jesus, the man from Nazareth. He is a prophet, they said. He was powerful, and he did and said wonderful things. But the religious leaders handed him over to be killed, and he died on a cross. We were hoping that he was the one who was going to save Israel. The disciples said that these things happened three days ago. They said that some women had gone to the tomb that morning, but they could not find Jesus' body. The women said they had seen angels, and the angels said Jesus was alive. Some of us who followed Jesus went to the tomb, and it was just as the women said, they explained. They did not see Jesus. His body was not there. Jesus said to them, Don't you believe everything the prophets said? Didn't the Messiah have to suffer and die to be glorified? Then Jesus taught the, dis the disciples everything in the scriptures that was written about him. He talked about the books written by Moses and the prophets. Jesus and the two disciples arrived at Emmaus, and they asked Jesus to stay with them. So Jesus joined them for dinner. He took the bread, and he thanked God for it, and he broke it into pieces. Then he gave the pieces to the disciples. Right away, the men realized who the man was, Jesus. But immediately, Jesus disappeared from their sight. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, as I said earlier, this particular sermon is a special sermon that I hope all the young people and the children will enjoy. This has been a very unusual Easter and spring break, hasn't it? I'm sure that your parents have explained to you that there is a certain kind of sickness that is going around and it's very easy to catch. And because of that, we haven't been able to go to school or to play in groups or even come to our church. Now, I don't know about you all, but this has made me very sad. I love to come to church and hear about God's love and Jesus' life and how the Holy Spirit is always with me. But I also love to see every one of you and get hugs. I miss seeing how happy Gwen is when little Darcy comes to Sunday school. And I miss seeing Presley and big Darcy sitting together in church. I miss getting a bulletin from Trent and watching AJ and Abby take up the offering. I miss seeing Ella and Peyton sit in the balcony and getting pictures from the Kern children that they have colored for me during the sermon. I miss seeing Emma and Liam greet their cousins when they come in, and I especially miss my hugs from Jenny. It just makes me sad. Well, I've also been a little bit afraid that someone that I love might get this sickness, and that would make me even sadder. My mom was sick a few weeks ago, but she had another kind of sickness. Still, she had to go in the hospital for about three days, and I couldn't go see her at all, and I was very worried but she's doing much better now. Well, sometimes when I'm sad or afraid, I remember a book that is very special to me. A friend of mine read it and then gave it to me one day when I had something really important to do and I was very worried about it and it helped me remember that God is always with me 
and that people that I love are always with me too, even when I cannot see them. So I'd like to share that book with you now. The name of the book is The Kissing Hand, and it was written by Audrey Penn. The Kissing Hand. Chester Raccoon stood at the edge of the forest and cried. I don't want to go to school, he told his mother. I want to stay home with you. I want to play with my friends and play with my toys and read my books and swing on my swings. Please let me stay home with you. Mrs. Raccoon took Chester by the hand and nuzzled him on the ear. Sometimes we all have to do things we don't want to do, she told him gently, even if they seem strange and scary at first, but you will love school once you start. You will make new friends and play with new toys, read new books and swing on new swings. Besides, she added, I know a wonderful secret that will make your nights at school seem as warm and cozy as your days at home. Chester wiped away his tears and looked interested. A secret? What kind of secret? A very old secret, said Mrs. Raccoon. I learned it from my mother and she learned it from hers. It is called the kissing hand. The kissing hand, asked Chester. What is that? I'll show you, Mrs. Raccoon said. And she took Chester's left hand and spread open his tiny fingers into a fan. Leaning forward, she kissed Chester right in the middle of his palm. Chester felt his mother's kiss rush from his hand up his arm and right into his heart. Even his silky black mask tingled with a special warmth. Mrs. Raccoon smiled. Now, she told Chester, whenever you feel lonely and need a little loving from home, just press your hand, press your hand to your cheek and think, Mommy loves you. Mommy loves you. And that very kiss will jump to your face and will fill you with toasty, warm thoughts. She took Chester's hand and carefully wrapped his fingers around the kiss. Now do be careful not to lose it, she teased him, but don't worry. When you open your hand and wash your food, I promise the kiss will stick. Chester loved the kissing hand. Now he knew his mother's love would go with him wherever he went, even to school. That night, Chester stood in front of his school and looked thoughtful. Suddenly he turned to his mother and grinned. Give me your hand, he told her. Chester took his mother's hand in his own and unfolded her large, familiar fingers into a fan. Next, he leaned forward and he kissed the center of her hand. Now, you have a kissing hand too, he told her. And with a gentle goodbye and I love you, Chester turned and danced away. Mrs. Raccoon watched Chester scamper across a tree limb and enter school, and as the hoot owl rang in the new school year, she pressed her left hand to her cheek and smiled. The warmth of Chester's kiss filled her heart with special words. Chester loves you, it sang. Chester loves you.
And here's a picture of Chester and all of his animal friends at school learning from the wise old owl. That's a very special book to me. And I thought about it when I read the story that we just heard from the Gospel of Luke about Jesus meeting his two friends on the road to Emmaus. The people in the Bible story that we heard about had heard that Jesus had died on the cross and they were very, very sad. But then they heard that he was alive again and they were very confused. You can imagine how you would feel if you heard that someone had died and then come back to life again. Well, they were walking down this road and all of a sudden a man came out of nowhere and was walking with them. It was Jesus, but God did not want them to understand who he was yet. So he kept them from recognizing him. But the Bible tells us that the man started to talk and told the whole story of God's people and all that God had done for them. The man told them about Moses and Jonah and Isaiah and a lot of other people that their parents had taught them about from the scriptures. Then the Bible says that the, the friends invited the man to stay for dinner. And after he said the blessing, he took bread and he broke it up. And when he did, the Lord opened their eyes and they were able to understand that it was Jesus who was with them. I believe there's a very important lesson for us in this story. In the book, The Kissing Hand, the raccoon Chester was afraid to go to school without his mother. But the mother taught him that when we think about people that we love, that it helps our hearts not be afraid. So if he put his little paw up against his cheek after his mother had kissed it, he would remember his mother and how much she loved him. I bet that when he did that, he thought of all the things that they had done together before he was old enough to go to school. I bet he thought about the time that his mother built a fort because it was too rainy to go out and play in the forest. I bet he thought about the times they had gone to the playground and played on the swings, and I bet he remembered that one time that he even let, her, let him eat pizza for breakfast. I bet he remembered how his mom would rock him when he was tired or not feeling good and how she would kiss his boo-boos when he fell down and got hurt. And I'm sure that made him feel very comforted. Well, I think that is why God kept his friends from knowing who Jesus was in the very beginning. He wanted them to remember all the stories that Jesus told them before they ate together. And when they heard about how Moses had saved the people from slavery in Egypt, and how Jonah had been rescued from the belly of a whale, and how Isaiah had taught them all the things they needed to know to be comforted and safe, then they knew that God was always with them. This book was read to me on a very important day. You see, when you're going to be a preacher, you have to go to a very special school called a seminary. And I was a little bit old when I went to seminary, so by the time I finished, I was almost 40 years old. Well, when you get to the end, you have to do this really hard thing called preach the senior sermon. And you have to preach at your home church, and your professor comes and sits in the congregation, and he watches you, and he makes a tape of what you're doing, and then he gives you a grade. And it is a very scary day. And besides that, my church is very big, the one where I grew up, and there was probably about 300 people there that day, my family and my friends, and I was worried that I wouldn't do a good job, and I was worried that I would disappoint them. And so when I woke up, I thought, you know what I need to do? I need to go to Sunday school where all my friends are. My Sunday school class was full of people that loved me. They prayed for me when I had to take this awful class called Hebrew, and it made me think that maybe I didn't want to be a preacher after all. They sent me cards and notes of encouragement, so I knew that they loved me and they were behind me all the way. Well, when I went to Sunday school that day, a friend of mine had the book, The Kissing Hand, and she began to read it to all of us. Now, I told you that we were pretty old. I was about 40, and well, some of the women in the room were 60 or 70, and I couldn't quite figure out why she was reading this story to us about The Kissing Hand. But she knew that I was going to be very worried and nervous that day. So after she read the book, she had everyone in my class 
take their hand and put a kiss in the middle of their palm, like that. And then she pulled a chair into the middle of the room and she asked me to come sit in it. And all of my friends came by the chair one by one and they put their hand on my face and said, I love you. And it was so special. So later in the day, when I had to preach that sermon, I wasn't afraid at all because I felt every one of my friends love. I felt them up there with me in the pulpit. And I knew that God was with me too because their love and God's love is so strong. So I want every one of you, grown-ups and children alike, to hold your hand up like this toward the computer or the television or the iPad or whatever it is that you're watching worship on. And I'm going to send a kiss right into your hand. So hold it steady, okay? Here goes. Did you catch it? You see, even if we can't be together right now, we have the memories of the things that we have learned about when we've studied about God together and the ways that we love each other in the church. I can remember how I love to watch Eli and Ella and Ian give Miss Gail a hug or Miss Margie a hug, and it makes me smile. I can picture Jameson taking up the offering in his Clemson jacket, and it makes me laugh. I can see in my mind's eye how beautiful Annabelle and Ava are, especially when their mom has fixed their hair in such a pretty way. And I can see how happy Gwen and Ava are when AJ takes them into the nursery to see Miss Pam. I can almost hear Mila giggle. And I can think about how young Nick and Jake and Mason were when I first met them and how they've turned out to be such wonderful young men and do so many things in the church. And all of these things make me feel so happy. I know that even when we're not in the same building, we are still a church family. We have memories, and it will open our eyes to how much God loves us and how much we love each other in the church. So I hope that these two stories, the story about Jesus and his friends, and the story about the kissing hand will give you warm, toasty feelings until we can all be together again. Now, I'm going to teach you all a song. It's a song to remind us that no matter where we are, whether we are apart or together, that we are still the church. We're all joined together by God's love for us and by our love for each other. So I'm going to sing it one line at a time, and you can sing it at home, and then we'll sing the whole thing together, and it will be our prayer. And it goes like this. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus, all around the world, Yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is the people. Do you think you can do that? When we get to the church part, you put your fingers together like this. Your moms and dads might have to help you and make the church, okay? So we're going to sing the whole song together now. Ready? I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is the people. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. Amen.
Will you pray with me? God of grace, we thank you for the many ways that you bless us. We thank you for the nurture and support and love we feel from the people that you have put in our lives, especially from our church family. This has been a difficult time, and we often complain that we are tired of staying at home and of being with the same people. Remind us, Lord, of the people who have no homes and who have no one to share their lives with. We also know that there are so many people who are literally keeping our world going right now. The doctors, nurses, scientists, grocery store workers, mail workers, delivery people, firefighters, policemen and women, and others who would love to be home with their families, but are working hard to protect, to heal, and to provide. We pray also for those who are dealing with the destruction of homes and the life of property and the loss of property and loss of lives after the storms in Louisiana, in the upstate of South Carolina and other places. Give them hope and healing. We pray for those who need things that they cannot find right now like medicine and other supplies. Give us patience and creativity to find new ways of handling the challenges we face. We lift our voices to you in praise for the kissing hands in our lives, the hands who teach us, who give us hope, who share what they have in love and who keep in touch with us in ways that are new. Above all, let us not lose sight of the gift of grace that we all received when Jesus left the tomb and walked among your people to show them the message of salvation, sent as a gift to all who would receive it. Use us in ways that we may never have imagined to be instruments of hope and healing. We pray in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now go from this place forgiven and freed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and may you always feel God's kissing hand upon you. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be at your back. The sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall softly on your fields. And until we meet again, till we meet again, May God hold you in the palm of his hand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.